So, hello everyone. It's so wonderful to experience this virtual space with y'all. I'm Joni Cooper, the Director of Programming for DocLens here at CFI. And I'm thrilled after much delay due to COVID to finally get to sit down with author, adventurer, and now farmer, I believe, in the UK, Sarah Uten, and Director Jen Randall, who has documented a number of women adventures and also follows adventures of her own, now based in the coastal mountains of British Columbia. Welcome and congratulations to you both. Thanks, Joni. Thanks, Thanks for having, having us. us. Great to see you here. Am I right about that farming thing, Sarah? Well, I'm married to a farmer now. I don't consider myself a farmer. I help in and out with different bits when they need a hand. Um, we've got three donkeys, so I'm probably more of a donkey mum than a farmer, but I'm happy to be called farmer, I'll go with that. And donkey mother is pretty darn good too. That's fun. Now tell me, um, how soon after publishing your book, Dare to Do, after completing your journey, did you turn to the idea of making a film? Now I know you'd certainly had the idea from the beginning, else you wouldn't have bothered with that huge task of filming every step of the way. And that's not an easy thing to do, am I right? You are quite right. It was not always an easy thing to film, but equally at times the camera was really my friend. And when I was solo for months at a time, it was often a source of comfort and quite fun as well to sort of just almost be in relationship with the camera. Um, and, and to be a bit creative with things at times. But you're right, there was no immediate plan for the film. Uh, as I went through, we, we were unsuccessful in getting commissions or anything, or, or anybody definitely interested. So I just had a real sense of, I want to wait until I find the right person to sort of do justice to this story. And I'm trying to think, Jen, when it was that I was in touch with you, was it the end of 2016 or was it into 2017? I think it might've been 2016, the end of. It was, I think it was 2016. It was, cause I think you saw a film of mine at Kendall Mountain Festival. A Is very right? good film called very Operation good film. And a good film. Yeah, and then you got in touch with me and I had already seen a film about the kayaking leg of the journey in the Aleutians. So I knew of you and I remember enjoying that film and it really loving the humor and this like, just the joy like bursting through that film, even though it was this grueling, really difficult and dangerous journey you're on. I was like, well, she's having fun and she's like loving it. And I just, I don't know, I always remembered that. So yeah, you got in touch with, yeah, so 2016, I think. Yeah, and then 2017, was, we launched our Kickstarter, I guess, sort of summer 2017. That now, because I remember the Kickstarter, because I was one of your, your Kickstarter contributors. Oh, uh, thank, thank you. you. Early on, because I, at the time I was working at the Banff Mountain Festival. And of course, as with any documentary work, we're always looking to bring women's stories up and women filmmakers up. Uh, and it was the same there. And uh, now, am I remembering right? Were both of you in Banff back then? Sarah, you were passing through or? We were in Banff in 2018, I think, were we, Jen? For yeah. the... 2019, yeah, 2018, not 19. No, but you weren't, you, I, I think, were either of you in Banff like in 2016-ish or before? No. Not me. No, I came to the festival in 2017 as well. Yeah. When she won another award. <laughs> well, you know. Um, yeah, your, your journey didn't pass right, right through Banff, well, no. did it, Sarah? No, it, no, it was a little bit... Um, Hmm. No, it didn't. But I'm trying to think how, how maybe I passed. I'm trying to think why I didn't come Banff way, but I didn't. Right, <laughs> because you must have passed just a little bit, uh, maybe. I think east. Was further east. Yeah, that's right. That would make sense. Because I came down, yeah, down the mountains out a little bit further along. That's it. 
It all feels so long ago. It, yes, it was. Yeah, well, I, I was so um, delighted to see this film finished and just so with such finesse. I mean, it was so nicely produced. You two did just a fantastic job. The audio and the soundtrack, all the music was just so fitting. I think the post-production decisions were just stellar, including that gentle contemplative narrative and that perfect score, like all the music selections just so discreetly set the tone and the mood throughout. Uh, you, you both did such an incredible job of weaving Sarah's incredible story together. Well that's, done. Um, that's lovely to hear about the music. We spent a lot of time and quite a lot of our budget getting the right <laughs> music. And, you know, you fall in love with a track and you really hope you can use it and license it and get permission. And so, yeah, we put a lot of love into the soundtrack. That's lovely mm. to hear that you enjoyed it. It showed, it showed. Did, did you also find there was some synchronicity involved with the music? Definitely, definitely in terms of um, like the, the one track that really stands out for me in that is uh, To You Alone by Tom Rosenthal, which as I'm talking to my weather router the last day of the Atlantic, the surprise, well, not, well, I wouldn't say a surprise, but this kind of urgent decision to make about the weather and then very quickly being picked up off the boat and leaving happy socks. For me, that, um, that, that track is just so, so perfect. And I cry every time I see it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to cry now. Right. Honestly, editing those sequences where you, I mean, I guess everyone's seen the film by the time we've seen this, but when you have to yeah, leave your boat, I edit those like, no, no, <laughs> you know, like, you know, what's happening as I watch that footage and yeah, it's heartbreaking. So we needed a heartbreaking song. Oh, totally heartbreaking, Sarah, to get, oh, to get yourself through that and back on track, pretty amazing. I also especially love the squibbles and, and, and squiggles over those, those moments of anguish and frustration. Now, whose idea was that? That was just a perfect. That was Sarah's idea. Um, I think we talked about how it felt in those moments. And if you could, if there could be an image of the inside of your head at those times, what would it look like? And we were like scribbles and scratches. And I feel like those scribbles are almost like a little poltergeist that kind of like bursts through every so often and then takes over and then has to retreat a little bit. Um, but we hired some really great animators in London called Nerd. Gosh, it's Nerd Productions, isn't it, Sarah? Yeah, that's right. That's yeah, right. and they just took that idea and ran with it. And I think... Um, it was real paint on paper that they did mm -hmm. that with, which is really cool. So it was, um, yeah, a wonderful young animator who went and did all these painting scribbles and then, yeah, laid them over the film. Yeah, it looked magic, I thought. Well, and, and Sarah, you were talking about um, having a relationship with, uh, with, the, uh, um, with the camera and everything, but also, you you actually never seemed to be alone because you had you had Gulliver and you had Hercules and you had Happy Socks and and you you did such a terrific job the two of you of of actually including these these as characters throughout throughout the film not to mention you know Gao and real characters but but. For us, of course, we only saw a short segment of these hours and hours of um, footage that you must have shot, but they really did come across as, as characters. Was that something that you had thought about? It was so integral to my journey that, that those relationships were so integral to my journey, rather, that it would have been 
it just wouldn't have been right not to have included it and um, as a, you know, included them as, as characters like that. And, and I think, like you just said, you never seem to be alone because of those relationships. And that's certainly how it felt to me as well. Um, the idea that even in solitude from humans, that actually I'm in community with my boat, my bike, the animals around me, um, the kind of the universe almost, um, particularly when I'm out at sea, that, that just felt so profound. Um, and I'm so glad that through the film, we were able to share the sense of that as well, because I appreciate that probably not everyone's going to go and spend a few months out at sea in a tiny rowing boat by themselves. Um, but to, to try and bring an essence of that to people was, was, uh, or has been a real, um, that real joy really and and important with that and then with with the the other sort of human characters that we see throughout the film as well like you mentioned Gao and then there's Lucy and Justine who are probably our most central ones um, that was really important too to be able to share the the kind of the humanity of the road okay beyond Justine and, and Lucy who are part of my life all the time but to, to just share the humanity of of the world that I met as I went along. Um, and certainly for me, it was so special to be back in amongst that film because for the most part, I didn't ever go back and look at what I'd filmed particularly. So there was that gap of a few years um, where all this footage had just been stuck away and, and then Jen started digging through it all um, and would send me things. And so to, to bring all of that back was so emotive so visceral um you know it was it's like i was back there and and certainly being reminded of those characters and, and that warmth and sort of humility and, and friendliness and kindness was uh yeah really special jen when you were going through all these hours of, of film obviously that that was not an easy job i can only imagine there are quite a number gems in there that didn't make it through and ended up on the cutting room floor. Can you tell us about any of those? Oh gosh. <laughs> Do you know, now I almost can't remember what we left out, but I know we did have lots of conversations of, you know, we'd love to keep this part in, but maybe we can't, I mean, sometimes we had to cut things just because of time, because of the running time. Sometimes there wasn't maybe enough footage to support a whole scene. Um, sometimes a bit that comes for me, hmm. just interrupting there, that just came in, as you said, I can't really remember specific ones. So sometimes things didn't have enough around it to be a sort of coherent story. It would be more like just a beautiful, tiny little bit that just wouldn't be able to fit somehow. And I remember there was one bit with um, Gao when we got to Beijing and I filmed him, but the lighting and the audio was such poor quality. And I filmed him asking him some questions. And I said, quite cruelly, really, I said, how can you sum up the journey in three words? You know, like massive challenge to sum it up in three words. And he thought about it and he said, I am happiness. Actually, just happiness will do. And I so wanted that to be in there, but it just, you know, I think where the story ends with Gao in the film is really beautiful and, and it, it didn't work to prolong it, especially with some really poorly shot stuff. But um, <laughs> yeah, that, that was, was a really special moment. There was yeah. another moment as well when you were kayaking along Sakhalin, and I think it was Sakhalin, and you stayed a night outside or inside maybe a really old fisherman's cabin and he was there so and true. that was a really beautiful moment too just dropping into this man's life in the middle of nowhere so old clearly still fishing and living really remotely I remember watching that and just I built I think I did build quite a scene around it but in the end yeah we, it, there just wasn't yeah. space or whatever so gosh there must be so much but you do learn to be quite ruthless i'm going through a process with another film now where you've ruthless, ruthless yeah where you you build this huge i mean we could have made that film 20 hours long yeah but then you just start pulling bits out and actually that can be quite fun because then your story really 
comes together and starts flowing really well. Mm-hmm. And that's quite exciting, actually. Once you've, once you've started being ruthless, it's, it gets easier. And we even, thinking of that, we even made the, well, we, you mostly, <laughs> then chopped it down to a 43 minute cut for a, a festival tour. And so I was just like flabbergasted. How on earth was she going to do this? But um, I heard from somebody, they said, oh, that's even better again because of that flow and speed and so on. Really? Um, so I don't I agree with that. Weird me, I thought this is going to be impossible. We'll try, but this will be impossible. But it was weirdly easy. Maybe because our structure was so strong then, you could pull out quite large chunks, but it still could work. Or maybe our structure wasn't strong enough. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> how many how, how many hours of footage did you have? Did you know what I did? There I don't was know. nine terabytes of footage, which oh my gosh, a lot. Um, and Jen I spent know. four months looking through it and you got halfway through and sort of said, okay, we need somebody else to help with this. Yeah, we had to hire someone to finish <laughs> pulling out some selects because, yeah, we were four months in and I thought I have to start editing this <laughs> film properly or we're like, never going to have a film. So I think it was probably six months in total of just going through footage and then, yeah, just crafting. I mean, we, we optimistically thought we could finish the film in a year. I think it was two years or a year and a half maybe uh, we didn't think, yeah, it's think it's a year and, it was a year and a half so yeah. we weren't that we weren't that um far behind really and some of that delay was through sort of personal stuff for both of us more yeah, sort of real true. life squiggles getting in the way of yeah. um of things and it was a really good thing to be in a team where that could happen you know and not try and just blindly for john when each of us needed a bit of a break at um, a couple of points. Um, but to say, actually, let's just still make this a really special film and give it the due time that it needs. And, you know, it, it arrived eventually. <laughs> and that, that, is, that is such a great decision to make because so many times filmmakers um, rush to complete for a, a festival deadline or something like that. And it is just so great not to do that because at the end of the day you want a film that you can always look back on and be proud of and not say oh I wish we'd done this or yeah I think a lot of filmmakers don't love editing they love shooting Mm -hmm. so they put loads of time into shooting and then they're like oh edit it and then I'll move on to the next shoot but Mm -hmm. I really love editing that was fun it's I remember at one point I messaged Sarah saying I needed a little time I just needed to step back for a little bit because of personal things and she messaged back saying a film is but a film is but a film we'll just take our time and if we need another year fine and I thought that was so lovely and I think it let the film I like to say it sort of cooks for a while you know like you can step away and then you can come back and see it with fresh eyes so that was maybe a blessing in disguise. Mm. And do you know, ditto, but sort of slightly different, I suppose, in that when I was out with you in Squamish in May 2018, it must have been, um, to work on the edit, and I was not in a good place. Gulliver had turned up in the Philippines perhaps two months before, and it pushed me back into PTSD, and I was sort of reeling with that, and we were working on the ocean bit of the edit as well. And I sort of just couldn't do it. Um, so I actually ended up going home. And I remember the words that you said, Jen Randall, I've got those in my head. Cause you said, you know, trust the mess, trust the mess. And I still use that as a little mantra at times of, you know, if things are difficult, trust the mess, trust the mess. It's going to come out the other end. And I think in the same way, Jen, that you said when you needed a bit of time away that helped cook the film, I think, me being in that space also allowed something different to emerge, um, something sort of additional that, you know, fed into that narration and portrayal of, of, that, um, of that, that big storm sequence. So uh, equally, that was good. good which, time. yeah, which is another thing that I'm, I'm quite curious about in terms of the narration. And I... I'm assuming, I'm of course not sure, but I'm assuming that a lot of the narration 
came through the post-production process. Yeah. Was there anything that you had in your mind going into it that you wanted to um, convey through the narration? Or was that all the revelations and, and, and uh, experiences, did they, did they seem to percolate later as you worked, worked through it? Hmm, good question. So the, with, the with the narration, um, we, we both had different ideas to start with on that, actually. I, I'd always felt that I wanted to narrate it. This is my story. I want to be the voice in people's ear. Um, and Jen had, had, had thought differently. But I remember kind of Jen going away, sort of thinking, let's just think about this. Let's think about it. And then she came back and said, yes, the narration should be that you are talking as though you're sat next to people. So it's really intimate. And um, that felt like the perfect idea because I think ultimately with the film, I was so keen that it was really accessible and relatable to people because some of the things are so abstract, even to me, and I've been through them. I wanted to make sure that it felt, um, yeah, it felt relatable and, and as though people were coming along with me and, and a part of my world inside my head. Um, and so I was really glad that, um, yeah, I was really glad that we did the narration like that. And I think in terms of the wording of it, Jen, um, Jen sort of worked on some script and I'd kind of feed back and, and say, no, I think we should do perhaps a bit more like this. And then I'd try it. We'd do a sort of trial record and perhaps something else again would come out. And I think even right up until we um, were recording with We Are Audio in their studio in Bristol, um, things were still sometimes changing. Jen was in Squamish over the Wi-Fi. We'd be recording back here and sort of feeding back between each other. Um, and so it kind of emerged and evolved right the way through, I think, didn't it, Jen? Yeah, I, I loved the process of creating the narration. I would, going through all the rushes, I would make really rough sequences of maybe getting through Europe or, you know, a certain area, a certain country, and I would just put notes on the screen, like, voiceover, Sarah, maybe you would say, this or explain this or even a question like where are you now or what is that <laughs> you know and then Sarah would record on her phone kind of what I'd written or answer questions or make it more authentic and true to herself and so I'd put that in the film and then I'd kind of chop it up and maybe add more you know it was such a collaborative process and when Sarah came out to me or I went to visit her we would record a bit more together so it was really this evolving, I was going to call it a beast there, but I wouldn't say it was a beast. It was more of a nice... It's like a weave yeah. somehow. Yeah, it is like a weave. But I, I loved that process. And then, yeah, when it came to finally recording, we, we really knew what we needed. You know, it was all kind of roughly laid in there, but we'd still play with the odd word, like, maybe I could say it this way or that way. or yeah. so. Yeah. And, and probably, actually great to have somebody who wasn't on the trip or as close to the footage working with working together on that because there are so many things that that as the person right in the midst of it you might not think like like Jen said well where are you mm -hmm. you know of, of course I know where I am everybody else should <laughs> yeah no I think that's definitely right and um so Justine, who we see in the film, is a brilliant filmmaker as well. And right back at the beginning, that had been an idea that she would edit the final film of the journey. But as the journey progressed, we felt that, just as you've mentioned, someone with a bit more distance was what we actually needed. Um, and so, yeah, it was definitely, definitely great to be working with Jen with that um, sort of outside eye almost. And... I don't know. I know it was a huge challenge coming into the project with this mountain of footage to then, you know, pull together and knit and weave and chop and everything else. Um, but from, from my point of view, to have Jen doing that uh, with such mastery and um, sort of empathy to the story and energy and creativity with it was, yeah, just really magic as well. Thanks, Sarah. 
It's great to be on your journey. Sometimes I remember I was going through Kazakhstan footage for a few weeks <laughs> and uh, I was in a shared office at the time and someone mentioned Kazakhstan. And I turned around, I was like, oh, I've been actually. <laughs> I had to stop so I was like, no, I have not been to Kazakhstan. I've just been watching Sarah in Kazakhstan and feel like I was there. So I've rode across the Pacific and I stumbled <laughs> across China. Well, it must <laughs> really feel that way nice as a filmmaker. <laughs> Especially feel, feel that way because I've just been so immersed in the footage. I totally understand. You must have started dreaming about being on the trip. Yeah, yeah, and I definitely got seasick a few times. <laughs> yeah, no, it was it was intense, but it was so wonderful. And yeah, for those first several months where I was, I knew Sarah had done this incredible journey, and I that's an amazing story in itself, but I'm always interested in going a few layers down, you know, just asking, like, why? Like, wh why on your own? And like, why for so long, Sarah? And what's... What what's pushing you, or what are you are you running, or and um, it was really once I finished watching you get across the Pacific that I had, and that was six months in, and I was like, I think I understand this story a little better. Like it took a long time to find. And I think you were working it out too, Sarah, which was really interesting and special as well yeah do you know i was just about to say as you're speaking actually i think jen doubles up she's not just a director and editor and filmmaker but it's like you're a, a sort of a closet psychologist as well or, or psychotherapist <laughs> totally um, unqualified so <laughs> yeah because you would ask these questions that i know i batted away right at the start you know 2017 or yeah 17 when you said you know well why why did you do this and I said, oh, for the adventure and all of this. And you said, but no, why? What, what else is there? What are you running from? And I, I had no sense that I was running from anything at that point. I was very black and white. And then, like you say, I was figuring stuff out too. And especially sort of um, the trauma around the boat stuff and realizing how that was mixed up with trauma of being away at boarding school at such a young age that actually, yeah, the, the two processes did happen alongside each other of, me figuring myself out as well, which is an interesting concept. The idea of home and coming home, you know, we subtitled, subtitled it. What's that word? We have a, is word it, is it a subtitle? Uh, title? What's that word? So we've got home and outward journey inward. What's that bit called? Oh, that would be a tagline. Tag, what that, that tag word is? Pretty, what is that? Tagline. Yeah, the tagline. Yeah, yeah. The tagline of an outward journey inward. I think that's really what that is. Was that process of coming to to really understand why I'd been on that journey um, and and what had come from it, and realizing that that journey of processing and um, coming really coming truly home to myself, I think, still feels like it's a bit of an ongoing process now. You know that 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 has been as long as, if not longer, than the physical journey itself. And, and certainly in terms of my um, physical health coming back to a place of balance. I think there's a, there's a line in the film towards the end of the Pacific, perhaps, um, around the idea of, you know, I'm still working on finding balance in my health all these years later. And, you know, it's been a year almost since the film was released, and I feel I'm almost there but I'm not quite you know that is still a work in progress so yeah it's interesting how the film and the process of the filmmaking has yeah has been therapeutic and cathartic and revealing um, on a personal level too. Did you ever like seriously consider throwing throwing in the towel like seriously? The, it's so interesting um, when that happened. It happened once and I never imagined that A, it would happen at all and B, that it would happen for love because I remember before I went away reading books of journeys of, you know, adventures where they'd either met someone along the way and, and sort of stopped and gone home to be, be madly in love with this person or they'd gone away and they were pining for the person that they left behind. And I just could not understand it at that point. I obviously had never quite had <laughs> love on that level where I'd ever considered that. But coming off the back of 
the Aleutians journey, the kayaking leg. As I then cycled um, sort of into uh, the winter of, of North America, that's when I started thinking, I'm really sad being apart from Lucy. She's having a hard time. Is this journey worth it? And I, I did feel that um, going home could be an option. Okay, it wasn't for a very long time because by the time I talked about it with Lucy, we actually decided, no, this is just what it is right now. And we worked out a way for Lucy to come and join me, which I'm so glad that A, she came and joined me to, to, for us to ride together for a couple of months. That allowed me to feel like I could chunk the rest of the journey and see the way to the end. But just in terms of the journey as a whole and, and what it kind of gave me and the, the people that I met and the things that I learned and ending up having to sort of stop on the Atlantic and being okay with that. I just, as part of the whole journey, it's just so cool that all of that happened. So yeah, I suppose, I suppose I didn't really think about it that seriously, but it did enter my mind because every other point that might've been, well, not just might've been, but that was really, really difficult and challenging. I just had this sense of, okay, I want this bit to be over and the next nice bit to hurry itself along. Um, because I really did have that sense of it's, it's just what's happening right now that's really difficult. Um, that's not going to be that way forever. So, um, yeah, I didn't ever, apart from that, think of, think of stopping and throwing it in. And maybe that also plays, well, plays into just my psychology at that time of I can't fail, I don't want to fail. Um, I've said I'm going to do this. I want to do it. I believe in it. And I suppose perhaps up until the Atlantic, there was more of a sense in my head of sticking more rigidly to those rules. Whereas as time went by, that sort of softening of my idea of success and, and so on, um, or, or what it means to, to journey somehow, that that evolved. And I'm really glad that it did because it's a much more realistic way of living life <laughs> well it must have also been kind of nice sort of like anticipating you know christmas or something anticipating it's like i i'm going to do this and then a whole new adventure can unfold definitely and i think that was one of the greatest learnings from the journey too was all the things that didn't go to plan or, or were surprises, or perhaps came from some really difficult things happening, like that big storm on the Pacific. Actually, those evolutions were the best twists and turns and stories of the trip. Um, the storm on the Pacific brought me home, and I met Lucy. Um, I know that the, the sort of the emotional, mental, psychological storm that came from that Pacific uh, rescue was horrendous but equally that gave me more empathy and understanding for others and more insight into my own needs and ways of asking for help and, and so on. Uh, Gao, I'm so excited that Gao came along and asked, well, he didn't ask if he could join. He told me that he was coming, <laughs> um, but that I was willing to say, yeah, sure, let's try. Um, and going to the Aleutians in the Pacific, on the, you know, on the second um, attempt on the Pacific, someone, I don't know if it was at a talk or in a blog or something, they said, um, were you disappointed you didn't make it to Canada? And I just thought, whoa, have you ever looked at pictures of Alaska? That is a bonus. <laughs> That's like a whole bonus few months of the journey. So I think all those twists and turns and evolutions were exactly like um, Christmas ultimately, the sort of the surprises and yeah. richness that they offered. Yeah, and also just the fact, like the line that you said came from Gao. It's like, Sarah, you allowed him, you contributed to something he'll never forget. And for you to come away with that one thing, one of the things that you remember about the trip, that, that happiness that you helped facilitate with Gao and something he probably would never have even tried to do. Oh, it's the coolest thing. And I, I was really conscious of the idea that I, I've been sort of so lucky in, in 
growing up, my education and, and people who'd helped with this journey, there was that I had this real sense of so many people have helped me. This is a great chance to help him as well. And, you know, what might happen. But I think the even like an even more special ripple that's come away from that, because like you say, he, he does talk about it every time we're in touch. And um, that's so exciting to to know that we shared that. And it, it's so meaningful for him and meaningful for me, but it's become so meaningful for so many other people as well. His story and what that energy and spirit sort of symbolizes, because I think we've all, I know that I do, we've all got a gal inside of us that wants to do something, but we're nervous, we're scared, we talk ourselves out of it because of what, of other, what other people are thinking or the idea of what might go wrong, etc. But that example of stepping out, not really knowing what you're getting yourself into, but kind of going, I'm going to do this and I'm going to keep on battling even when it's tough and coming out the other side feeling empowered by it. So many people have been touched by that story it's such a special, it's so special to me. And I don't think Gao knows just quite the impact that he has had on people. That's pretty magic. Very magical. The, um, when you talk about empowerment, you know, uh, watching this film, it really, it gave me another perspective, you know, a, a woman's journey made by a woman's filmmaker as opposed to a typical adventure told by by a man and it, it, it not always but so often it's about conquering something and and just getting through it and sure you may see some emotions in it but it's mostly about conquering and how we failed here or, or succeeded there and I it's just such a such a pleasant um, way to to see the difference in how often two genders tell a story differently, and I mean, sh do you feel like you conquered something? I mean, other than your your fears or insecurities, perhaps. You no, and I don't even feel I conquered those either. They're still alive and present as well. <laughs> and I think that's something that's really, I, like from our chats right at the beginning, Jen, that was really important, that it was an honest portrayal in terms of the fears and the struggles and the challenges. And um, it didn't make it into the film, but I'm sure there's, there'll be footage of Justine and I joking about willy wavers, because like you say, that I think in this genre of, of filmmaking, there is a lot of hyperbole and it is often very um, macho and um, kind of square jawed. And like you mentioned, sort of about conquering and, and so on. And that's, that wasn't my journey and that wasn't how I wanted my journey to be portrayed. So- um, Not you I, either, is it? It would be really no. hard to make a film about you like that. No. I mean, Conquer. I mean, so, there's that yeah. bit in, in Sakhalin, isn't there, where I get, to, I get to the other side having stayed upright for the last eight hours and I fall out in the sort of knee-deep oh, surf. Yeah. I didn't capsize in the kayak once, except for when I get out of the boat and look like a muppet and I lose my boat in the surf and things. So <laughs> I, that was really important, that it was really real and that I wasn't, we weren't, like you say, Jen, trying to make me look like something that I wasn't. And I think <laughs> um, on these kind of projects as well, I always find it really interesting to get to know people who have done incredible things, you know, superhuman feats, but then come to understand that we're not that different. Like, mm -hmm. you know, Sarah's doing this thing where you think like, I could never, I can't even, I couldn't even dream that journey up. But then you have so much in common with your life experiences, your insecurities, your worries, your, you know, that's what I find really interesting. And I think that's where a lot of inspiration can come, right? It's like, okay, we're not so different. Sarah's done this thing. Maybe I can do that thing I've been thinking yeah. about, or, you know, I think that's how you kind of pay it forward a little bit, maybe. Definitely. I, I think that's been reflected in our feedback as well. People talking along those lines of, I face my own storms. They've not been out at sea, but they've been, you know, in another setting or in my head or something or, um, that's 
seeing the story has really resonated for what they're going through in their own way. So I think you're exactly right, Jen, in, in that relatability of it and transferability of it somehow. Um, and yeah, people also writing and saying, I've now just bought a bike and I'm going to go and do this, or I've just signed up for that or whatever it might be. So that's, that's the best thing about this film for me is just how people have connected with it. But it was also in, in my mind for Jen, it was kind of a mountain of your own. Like Sarah saying, oh my God, here, take this, take all this footage. <laughs> and taking that on, like to me, that is incredibly inspirational too. Like it's not just the journey itself, but it's, but it's turning the journey into this wonderful story out of all of those hours and ter terabytes of footage. I think the biggest challenge was understanding Sarah's filing system. <laughs> there is none. <laughs> There's no filing system still. <laughs> like, whoa, <laughs> okay, this is challenging. No, <laughs> it, was, um, it was a big task, but you just kind of take a step in, don't you? And, I, I don't know, I had lots of tools that I was using to try and sort of form a, some kind of structure in my mind, because obviously there was a structure to the journey, but we knew we had to just condense it. So I'd have post-its on the wall, I'd have like Sarah's physical journey and her emotional journey and, you know, background themes we want to explore there and kind of build that as I went. I think I had a Google map going so I could understand your journey. Um, yeah, took lots of notes, like the key things that happened in China, big lists. Uh, you just slowly, slowly, slowly build this picture and then, yeah, chip away at it. And it's working out of all the things you could say about this story and through this story, what do we really want to say? Because mm -hmm. we can only really say a few things and say them well. So I think that's, that's the part I actually really, really love. It's like, so what is this? What, are we, what is it about, really? Um, so it's a fun mountain to climb for me. I had a good time. Well, and, and like, like the journey, Sarah might have been way more difficult to, to take on the journey had you thought about the journey as a whole. Again, one step at a time from both the journey side and the film side. Just take one step at a time and eventually it comes together yeah definitely i remember though i had a map um for that first continent of eurasia i had a, a, a map that we, well, it was actually a part of the map because i thought i don't need the rest of the world for now i'm just going to focus on that part of the map and i just keep it folded open to the side that was current and every week or so i'd put a little cross and just to watch that line coming across coming across and then reveal the next part of the map that I needed to focus on or, or like, okay, I'll look at the whole thing back to the small thing. Let's just focus it. That was a really important tool for keeping focused and not getting freaked out by what was ahead, you know, just enough planning for what was ahead to make sure it was planned and then um, come back to, uh, you know, where I was and, and to importantly look at the progress that had been made as well. That was a real boost at times to kind of go, I'm having a rubbish day and I've got all this distance to go, but oh, look at this. That's cool. Um, so yeah, I think just like anything in life, just slowly, slowly have a cup of tea. <laughs> um, it's a good philosophy. It's a great philosophy. And it's just so great that you two were able to be here. And I can't tell you how delighted I am to be featuring home in the virtual edition of Docklands this year. It's just, it gives me so much pleasure and it's been such a treat to be able to talk to you both in this way. And so there are some real advantages to doing things virtually. It, it, it may not always come to pass that uh, we can have, have you both in the same place, in the same room, more or less together. So thank you so much for sharing this journey. And thanks for your support, Joni. We're so excited to have the film in Docklands. Such a cool festival and totally different audience for us. And yeah, your support's meant a lot. So thanks. 
Yeah, ditto, what? echoing what Jen said. And that you're a supporter of the film right back at the start. That's a cool part of the story too. Thank you for that. Yes, and that's another reason why it, it feels like it's come full circle and just it's so happy to see it completed and on to your next adventures. Yeah, thank you. Onwards. Onwards. <laughs> thank you. Good night, thank everybody. You. Good night. Bye. Nice to see you guys.